This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I'm going to show how to do an easy shell stitch. It's going to be done in two colors. It is a multiple of 12 stitches. So I have cast on 36 stitches just for this sample. I knitted some rows of the darker color, which is just serving as a waste yarn before I begin the actual pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and put on a light color. It's a beige and begin with the first row of the shells. Now there are two different rows. One row is three shells across. You could have as many shells as you want as long as it's a multiple of 12 stitches. The other row is a half shell and then two sh full shells and then another half shell. That's what you have to do to get this to work together. Now start by putting the machine on H if it's a brother, setting it for short rowing. You want it to skip needles that are in hold. And for this first row, all of the needles go in hold except for the rightmost seven stitches. So three, six, seven stitches. Everything else goes in hold. And you knit from right to left over just that first seven stitches. Then put all but the two needles closest to the carriage into hold. So we have two needles in work right here above my finger. I'm going to zoom in these two needles. Now I'm going to do short row increases to form the shell. So opposite the carriage, my carriage is on the left, I'm going to put a needle into work on the right, knit across and go from two needles in work to three. Then opposite the carriage, put another needle in work so I'm on four, another five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then when I have eleven needles in work, that puts everything in work and I'll be on the far right side. Now I need to reposition. To reposition, I'm going to put eight needles into upper working position. It just happens that my little comb is about four needles wide this way. It makes it easy for me to count those out. And then I'm going to knit across all those needles. Now that was a full shell over there on the right and to make the next shell, let me reposition my claw weight, to make the next shell I put all but the two needles closest to the carriage out of work into hold position. And then I have these two, this is the center of my next shell and I'm going to do the same thing until 11 stitches are in work. So now two are in work. Three, Then I need to put eight more stitches in work to position my carriage for the next shell and knit over to there. Now having knit over to there, I will put all of the stitches except the two closest to the carriage and hold again and do the same thing. So three into work, four, five, And for this very last shell, I'll push the last needle into work and knit to the left. Now, I take the machine off hold, knit to the right because I'm repositioning so that I can make the next row working from right to left again. To begin my second row, which needs a half shell, then a whole shell, then a whole shell, and then a half shell, I have all the needles in hold except the rightmost two needles. The machine is set for hold or for short rowing. I thread with my darker color and I knit two rows. And then I can go ahead and put another needle in work, knit two rows. That was three in work, four in work, five in work, and finally six in work. 
Now I'm ready to reposition and do the next shell. I reposition by putting the next eight stitches into work. So four, eight, knit from right to left, then bring all but the two closest to the carriage back into hold. Now I've got two needles in work in the middle and I do my count to 11 thing again. So I have two in work, three in work, four in work, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And it's time to reposition so I bring eight needles into upper working position and go to the left. Then take everything but the two needles closest to the carriage and put it all on hold and do my count to 11 routine again. So I have two needles in work. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And this time I'm going to reposition all the way to the left edge. So I just push these all back halfway, knit to the left, then put everything in hold except the leftmost two needles. I need a half shell over here. So I knit two rows and put another one in work. So that's three in work, four in work, five in work, and six and one. Then to finish this row off and reposition to the right hand side, I take it out of hold, the carriage is an in, knit from left to right, put it back in hold, and that yarn can be taken out and we can thread up with the other yarn. And I'm going to put a clothespin on this yarn. I need a little bit of a tail to weave in later. So I want that to hang down. Now this side, again, begins with a whole shell. So everybody goes out of work except the rightmost seven. Check my math. And knit to the left. Then put five back out of work so that I have two in work and I do my count to 11 routine. So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. You need to push them back far enough so that they engage and knit. Now I need to take eight more stitches to reposition. Go to the left and I'm going to take all but the two closest to the carriage and put them out of work and do my rows up to 11 stitches again. So I have two stitches now and I put one more back. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You may wonder why I didn't leave three back. Well, I do that because those two are in the center and somehow it helps me mentally to know that I'm in the center of the shell each time when I do that. So now I'm going to bring eight stitches back to upper working position and into work to position myself here for this shell. And then everybody but the two closest to the carriage into hold and do my increase. One, Let's see, four stitches and work, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And for this last one, I have to do all 12. And then this is my repositioning row, so out of hold, go from left to right, back into hold, and I'm ready to do the row with the half shells again. Now I'm going to do a few more rows then come back on camera and show you what the stitch looks like. Now I'm just doing a quick loop through a loop bind off for this sample. I'm giving this a quick vertical tug just to set the stitches. No blocking at all and I'm going to go ahead and unroll it. 
I'll just put this on the gate pegs just to hold it. And I'm hoping that you can see how very much texture there is. This is very three-dimensional. And if you want all that dimension, you can leave that, or you can block this flatter. I'm just holding a sample that I did earlier in a sport weight yarn over my ribber cover, and I blocked the living daylights out of this. It's flat. And here's what the back looks like. Get a sense of the back is the back is nice. There's not a, any floats or anything like that. And on the sample I just did, which is unblocked, here's what the black back of it looks like. And then here's an earlier sample that I did in different colors that is unblocked. And somehow in these pastels. I think the texture really shows, so you can see it's a very three-dimensional sort of thing. For this last sample, I took the piece that I made and blocked it so that it was just lightly steamed. It still has some texture, but it's not completely covered in hills and valleys. And this is a very nice middle option for you if you just want to steam lightly and have a little better behaved edges.